Little Boozy appeared to understand the challenges he faced as soon as Shannon Sharp gave celebrities a platform to expose the dubious actions of Hollywood's elite. He may have even accidentally forewarned him of the consequences. What precisely did he say after that? Lil Boozy thought Cat Williams would encounter a lot of criticism following his appearance on the club's Shay Shay podcast. He tried to sidestep the comedian's remarks. First of all, Boozy Badass almost broke down in tears recalling how comedian Cat Williams had given him millions of dollars just after he was released from prison and in dire need of a break. He's bro called me to his show, and when I was leaving his show, I thought he threw me some weed in the car because it was wrapped up in a towel, but it was $15,000, bro. Boozy goes on, talking as if I really needed the money right now. I also had no intention of loitering. I mean, my kids and I were lodging in a hotel in downtown New Orleans. I had nowhere to stay at the moment. After Boozy backed Williams' character, many admirers who had previously praised him for his open interview on Club Shay Shay fell in love with him all over again. Right now, Shannon Sharp seems to be experiencing a more severe version of what occurred to Kat. The establishment is actually already defaming Shannon. As you may recall, comedian Mike Epps has stated that Sharp is a suspected secret gay man. Shannon has also been dealing with these charges for the previous year. When Shannon was regularly seen sitting in the front row at basketball games with Hollywood, his stylist, who is openly gay, rumors started to circulate. Ten years ago, Hollywood rose to prominence after he revealed a personal relationship with an NFL player. Even though Shannon never addressed the rumors regarding his sexual orientation, he could still need to answer to comedian Mike Epps' remarks. Mike clarified this during a recent stand-up performance. Shannon Sharp tried phoning around to set up an interview. Mike said, I said no, Medea, I ain't trying to do no interview. He says he turned Shannon down since Shannon wasn't what he was after. During the interview, looking at my balls from across the table. He went on to talk about Shannon's podcast, Club Shay Shay, and hinted that Shannon might be trying to make a secret of LGBT come out. Shannon is a gay man, and it appears that Hollywood is circulating accusations about him being a racist. Monique really brought up this subject in her podcast interview with Club Shay Shay. Don't mess with black women. Mm -hmm. And before you go any further, can I say this? Please. My grandmother told me something when I was a little boy. She said, boy, never chase a lie. Furthermore, shows like Saturday Night Live made fun of Shannon's interviews. In an eight-hour extended cut, the NBC sketch show mimicked the interview, with Egon Woodham playing the comic. It's true that I am three things. As Williams, she says to Devin Walkersharp, I am six feet three inches and I have never told a lie. In addition, Newton made fun of former President Obama, questioning why his name is made up only of vowels and asserting that he was the one who came up with the campaign slogan Yes, we can. In addition, he ridiculed Williams' ongoing dispute with Kevin Hart, which he brought up again in the Real Podcast interview. He was saying, probably, probably, I think we might, to me. Walker Sharp responded to Williams' resistance with even more obvious incredulity. Shannon, tell me how you plan to test me. It was me who yielded the fruit. The trees in front of me were not contributing anything novel. A lot more was disclosed in the preview for the complete interview, including claims made by Nwudum's Williams that he is the only person who has ever spoken in a single word at a time, information that the team is still investigating. To put things in perspective, on January 3, the well-known comedian Cat Williams visited the Club Shay Shay podcast. And Williams did not let down. In the course of the almost three-hour event, he addressed a wide range of topics with genuineness, even disputing Cedric the Entertainer's assertion that he had not stolen a joke for the Kings of Comedy Tour. Williams forced the National Football League Hall of Famer and co-host of ESPN's first take to alternate from being unable to control his laughter and being unable to voice his opinions at various points during the program. In response to Cedric's allegation that he didn't steal his joke, he highlighted that the two had already resolved their differences with Steve Harvey, 
but he felt compelled to speak the truth in public because the local star had lied. He said, I've watched all these lowbrow comedians come here and tell you straight up lies and disrespect you in your face. Williams would then deliver a brutal grilling to Cedric the Entertainer. That's not what you think, sir. I've hosted 12 comedic programs. You cannot watch his four comedy specials on Tubi or Netflix. William's cat gave a corresponding response. Throughout the event, the seasoned comedian persisted in making fun of troubled actor Jonathan Majors, Steve Harvey, Kevin Hart, and other celebrities, including Kim Kardashian. When Sharp asked Williams to tell his life narrative, he was very honest. He discussed his experiences as a homeless person as well as other little-known information, such as first stand-up comedy performance and his brief membership in the Nation of Islam while residing in Oakland, California. Regarding Monique, she was recently interviewed on the program. Monique made it clear during the long talk that she held a lot of resentment towards many Hollywood people who had either wronged her or conspired against her. To begin with, Monique is still upset that Oprah Winfrey asked her estranged family to appear on her talk program in 2010. The comedian and actor do not get along with Monique's brother, who has acknowledged to beating her, and other family members. It was very bold of them to decide to talk about the issues in their family. Oscar winner Oprah Winfrey cried, You betrayed me, sister, after Taraji P. Henson was mistreated and made fun of while the movie Purple was being promoted. She said something that Henson overheard, We know you were mistreated. That was incorrect, as we all know. We are aware of its injustice. Then you said, Oh, but Lady O handled it, turning around. I find that somewhat bothersome. That implies that Lady O can carry on with her current endeavors, and we find ourselves in a situation where, to put it mildly, Monique was thoroughly screwed over. The comedian then turned her attention to Tyler Perry, claiming that he was disseminating untrue reports about her being difficult to work with in an effort to undermine her reputation in the TV and movie industries. She added that it would be her word against his if it weren't for a recorded phone conversation in which he acknowledged doing this. The Tyler Perry audio was forwarded to you. Monique said, I don't want you to take me at my word. Perry retaliated sharply, pointing out that she had admitted to disseminating untrue claims regarding her work ethic. She claimed that a rumor and falsehood had cost her family tens of millions of dollars. Sharp questioned Perry about whether he would reimburse Monique for the money she lost as a result of the rumor, as it damaged her professional reputation. He directly asked him to discuss the circumstances during the program. She said later in the interview that the accusation was so damaging that it put her on a blacklist inside the industry, something she shouldn't have to deal with because she is a white woman. If she were a white woman, she informed Sharp, her name would be Melissa McCarthy. Same history, syndicated sitcom for five years. Similar historical period. There are differences in the opportunities. Monique went on to further criticize Tiffany Haddish. As you can see, Tiffany Haddish made a casual comment in 2018 about Monique's manager Sidney Hicks, whom she married in 2006. Haddish was questioned by GQ over Monique's call for a boycott of Netflix because to the platform's discrimination against women and people of color in stand-up specials. Avoid leading her life. My business functions differently than hers, Haddish remarked. That husband of hers is not mine. I'm examining all of the comedic chances that Netflix has provided for black women. You're going to find me protesting when my people are dying. Monique raised her voice in response to her statement. I sincerely believe this based on our lovely sister Tiffany Haddish's interview with GQ magazine. We keep putting each other under the bus, the woman said. I thought to myself, I might not have two DUIs if I had a husband like mine, Tiffany. You might not be involved in what appears to be S-I-N-G a young person if you had a husband like mine. I say all that without passing judgment, but when you open the door and say that your husband is like mine, I'm telling you that you have no business sitting in these places if your husband is like mine. She is referring to the two DUI charges that Haddish has been dealing with in recent years, 
as well as the 2013 essay lawsuit over a funny or die parody. Mo also made accusations against Kevin Hart, calling him a tool of the establishment. You see, Kevin Hart contacted her to try and correct her claims that she was blackballed after earning an Oscar for her role in Precious. Though he didn't consider himself Oprah's true friend, he wanted to get in touch with Tyler Perry on Monique's behalf because he knew him. I produce Kevin Hart's podcast, and I would like all of you to re-listen to it so you can hear it for yourself," she stated. You're like my mother, he says when he first arrives. To me, you resemble an aunt. You bring my sister to mind. All right, let's move on to discussing the podcast. We discuss the Tyler Perry conundrum. Oprah. He said, I'm reaching out to Tyler, but I don't really know Oprah. I'm grateful to Kevin for his word. He made contact with Tyler Perry. Kevin Hart called me back after, I think, a week or two. Mo, he muttered. I had a conversation with Tyler. Saying he didn't want to look at it again but hear me out, M.O., let's just put that behind us and collaborate to achieve amazing things. Let's talk about that. She did appreciate Hart for his support even though she wasn't satisfied with the outcome. At that point, my family was about to file for bankruptcy until Kevin Hart gave us a check and said, here you go. We will always be appreciative of that. We said, brother, we appreciate you with some interest on top because I don't ever want nobody to think when we were able to return it. My only goal is to confirm that I mentioned that. He said he would collaborate with her on any project, offering her the position of executive producer or anything else. However, a few weeks later, his manager informed them that Kevin was done seeing her. He told her it was all a miscommunication and he would get back to her right away when she asked him about it. The woman answered, that was two years ago. I never replied to Kevin Hart again after that. Monique talked candidly about being forced to play Would You Rather? When she was featured on DL. Hughley's radio program. By his team, not by him. That was where things went awry. Which would you prefer, your partner using Lee Daniels condom or not using one with Kareem Stevens? They questioned her. How does that uplift our community? I asked one of the employees. After the event, she called Hughley and got an impolite, yeah? That's how they do it on the radio show, he informed her. It got so bad that my lawyer had to get a cease and desist injunction to keep it from airing. That's how it all began, she continued. Monique claimed that Hewley had made comments and called her resentful over the years. She added that her spouse wasn't qualified to oversee her. Later on, she was the main act in a comedy show in which they both performed. He was late, though, perhaps in an attempt to scare his way into the major role. During his performance, she called him a coward and reprimanded him. Since then, Hughley has replied, labeling her a liar. Either way, when Shannon Sharp exposed Hollywood's elites by having Monique and Cat Williams on his show, something terrible had to happen to him. Although everyone was aware that there would be repercussions, nobody had predicted them to be as severe as they were. Anyway, that's it for this video folks, bye.